What's up everybody? Welcome back or to the channel. So today we're gonna to do a quick overview of what I have done to my Schwinn Axum DP mountain bike build so far. Now again, I'm not fully done building it yet. There are still a couple things I wanna do later in the spring, but for now, let me at least show you what I've done to it so far. Okay, so I went ahead and shut the garage door because it's just getting too cold outside. So I figured I'd try to film this inside with just the light. So the first couple things that I did to this bike was change out the stems and bars. Now, if you remember from one of the previous videos I did, I did buy a new stem, but it was the wrong size, so I couldn't use it, so I ended up mailing it back to the seller. I did use the race face blue handlebar, but it just did not have the rise needed to put my hand grips where I wanted them. So I ultimately ended up having to buy a new stem, and at the same time, I figured why not save some money and actually try some lower cost products test them out and see how well they do. So the first thing I did was replace the stem. Now this stem here I got on Amazon. It is a 90 millimeter length, but it's actually less because of the angle, but it does lift my handlebars up more to where I actually like them. And it does fit the 31.8 handlebars, so that was good. And I believe the angle is 35 degrees, but again, you could check all the specs because I'll post the links in the description of this video for all these products. But again, overall, this riser turned out great. I honestly think it works very well. It does put the bars a little forward, but pretty much in the same position as the factory stem, but it does lift them up a little bit. So this particular stem here cost me around 17 bucks. So not too bad on the stem. Then I went ahead and picked up a red headset spacer kit. So it came with about five different sleeves and different sizes and a top plate with a new bolt and a black cap. So I did that to just put a little bit of Keller Splash in the all black setup. And this spacer kit was about $8. Then I went ahead and installed these U-Pan handlebars. Now these are, I believe, a 780 millimeter long bar. So, but they do have little markings at the end that you can cut them shorter if needed. They do have a little bit of a rise to them, but they do sell these in a couple different sizes. But I believe they're around a 50 mil rise, but you could check their specs again in the description as well. And I believe they have a nine degree sweep back. So when I put this all together, I was actually able to rotate the bars a little bit and put them right in a perfect position for my riding height. Because again, the way they were from factory, they were too low and too short. So the problem with the factory bars on the original setup was I kept leaning myself over too far, which was hurting my lower back. So because of the angle of my back, I kept having to lift my head up, which was putting additional strain on the back of my neck. But after I got this set up the way I liked, I no longer had that stress on my lower back or my neck. Moving on, I got these nice lock-on grips. So again, these grips here are really nice. These are the marquee lock-on grips. They come in different colors. They feel great in the hand. No complaints there, they look awesome. Moving on, I did end up putting on some of these shifter sleeves, which are a really nice grippy texture. So what they do is they just pretty much slide on. Basically, I just took a little bit of Windex, sprayed the lever, slid them on. Once it dries, they don't really go anywhere, but they do offer a nice bit of grip. So if you happen to go through mud puddles and your shifter's wet or your hands are wet, these actually just give you something more grippy to grab. Plus they're available in different colors, so if you wanna add some different colors to your bike, that works out great. And again, these right here, I think these are around $8 as well, but you get two sets. So I put one set on my bike and I'll be putting the other set on my wife's bike. Then moving on, I did install a Shimano MT200 uh, hydraulic brake kit. Again, you could catch them online sometimes for around $110, $120. You just have to shop around on Amazon and eBay and see which one works out best for you in terms of price. But I had these on a previous bike build I did a while back, so I didn't even have to buy these. I just used them from the previous bike build and put them on this bike, which I highly, highly recommend. They offer such great braking with literally just using one or two fingers. So the hydraulic brakes, I really do like the Shimano MT200s. Moving on, I did add this seat. It's more of a touring seat. So again, it's not the real skinny one that hurts your butt, but it's not the really big bulky one either. It's sort of in the mid-size range. So it has a lot of great memory foam here. Very cushy and feels great riding. It does have the open cutout in the middle for airflow. Plenty of options in terms of installation for actually getting it to the right angle. So that works out great. That was about $35 for that seat. So 
Moving on, I did put some Race Face Chester pedals on here. I do like those. I know there's cheaper ones out there, but I do like the Race Face pedals. I paid maybe around 55 or 56 bucks for those. But those right there are the Chester pedals here. They really work out well. I don't have any complaints about them other than they're about 55, 56 bucks. So they're a little bit more on the costly side there. But moving on, I did grab a water bottle holder here. I actually got this at Walmart for around six or seven bucks. Works out great. I really like it. And again, I'll try to put links in the description for all this stuff. But I really like this because it holds a water bottle, but it does a really good job at holding actual water bottles. So if you come over here, and let's just get a regular water bottle. It holds it really well in there, which is what I like as well. Moving on, I got this really nice Blackburn mount on pump, which I think it just mounts on the back here, has a clip on feature, works out really well. Keeps the uh, pump out of the way. I don't kick it, I don't bump it, but it is nice knowing that I always have a pump with me in case of emergency, so I have that on there as well. But again, if I just do an overview here, we got a new stem, we got new spacers, we got new handlebars, I got the new lock-on grips, I got the Shimano MT200 hydraulic brakes, I did put the sleeves on the levers here. I did put a new seat on and I did put the race face Chester pedals. I did get the water bottle holder with, and I got the pump. So altogether total investment, if my math is correct, I think I spent probably around $280 on total upgrades on this bike. And again, I do still plan on upgrading the shock in the front, but I really do think this is a good shock. I just wanna run it through some trails and put it through its paces a little bit more. It does have a nice travel. I believe it's 100 millimeter travel. It does have a manual lockout, which does work pretty well. It's not the greatest, but it does work pretty well for a factory stock shock. But I am gonna run this through its paces a little bit more this year, and then I might end up later on in the summer upgrading to a different shock, maybe like a Sun Tour or something like that. So if my math is correct, the bike as it sits right now, total investment. So let's just round it up and say 700 the way it sits. So even if I upgrade my shocks to a higher end shock, my whole goal is to have this bike completely done for under $900, which in the end is really not a bad price for what this bike offers. Again, all aluminum frame, tapered head tube. It's got 29 inch wheels. These are the off-road tires. It's got front and back disc brakes. It's got the dropper post already. This is actually a one by eight drivetrain. And I gotta say, I really like it. It shifts perfectly well. It doesn't have a clutch, but I haven't had any problems with chain drops or anything. But I would say overall, this bike is a great starter bike in case you don't have a ton of money to jump right into a more expensive one. Go with the Schwinn Axum DP because it already gives you a really good platform to start from. And then even if you end up adding another four or $500 in total upgrades, you're still around a $900 bike, which I can probably tell you will compete with a lot of the other 29 inch downhill mountain bikes out there. But the whole goal is to show a lot of you that you don't have to invest a ton of money up front into a high end bike. You can honestly start with a very good starting platform like the Schwinn Axum DP, and then over time, add a couple hundred dollars in upgrades. And then a little bit further down the road, when you save up more money, maybe upgrade your shocks. And before long, you're going to have a really good mountain bike that can compete with many other higher end mountain bikes. Whether you're riding the trails or shredding down the mountains, this bike will compete with many of them. Now, again, is this going to give you the exact same experience as say maybe like a $2,500 specialized mountain bike? No, those bikes are much more higher end, a lot lighter. The shocks are a lot lighter. They're designed for more professional mountain biking. But let's face it, the majority of us out there are not professional mountain bikers. So the majority of us out there that actually want to do a little bit more aggressive mountain biking probably don't need higher end $2,500 or $5,000 mountain bikes. You could get away with a bike build like this and still shred it up. Okay. So again, I'm six foot three, 270 pounds. So I'm a pretty tall guy. But when I'm sitting on this bike, again, my feet could just go flat on the ground. And this is a 29 inch bike. And I do have the seat dropper post down as far as it can go. And I have the seat down as far as it can go. So I can still straddle the bike and feet are planted flat on the ground. 
okay? Then, as my knees are bent like this, as you can see here, this is my riding position, which is very comfortable. Before, my, my bars had me down like this. So it put a lot more stress on my back. And when I'm down further like this, I always had my head lifted up like this. So it put more stress on my lower back and put more stress on the back of my neck. Now I can actually ride at more of an upright position when I'm actually riding and I can still get aggressive when riding this bike. So again, I'll turn it around and show you it this way. I don't know if this helps any of you or not, but again, here's where I look like standing straddling over the bike. So I have plenty of room under the crotch with the bar sitting on the actual seat. I could just get my feet. My feet do fit flat on the ground. Okay. Then when I'm actually riding, I'll get my knee up here. I have plenty of leg room for the bike and the handles, even when I'm turning. Now when I'm at a sharp turn, I have to just kind of angle, but this right here feels so much better than how it was down here. Okay. Because again, when I, my neck was tilted up like this, it hurt my back and my neck for long rides. And it actually put a lot of stress on my lower back. Now, the way I have these bars positioned with the riser stem and the riser handlebars, I actually have the bars right where I want them and it allows me to more comfortably ride this bike, which is primarily the goal of what we're shooting for, is we need to make these bikes fit our specific body frame better. Because again, if you're out there on the trail and you don't have a bike that fits your specific body frame, you're gonna have some issues out there on a more aggressive trail. Now again, if you're just casually riding a trail, then pretty much the stock bike is meant for the average person. But if you're gonna go out on some trails and you're taller, shorter, heavier, lighter, longer arms, longer legs, longer torso, whatever the case may be, you need to make sure you adjust your bike to your specific bike frame. And this is what I've done and it works great and I really like the Schwinn Action DP with the custom mod so far. And again, when I put the uh, lock out, okay, you can see here, I have a lot of travel, okay? But when I even, when I sit on the bike, you can see here, just by sitting on the bike, well, maybe not so much, but when I sit on the bike, just general pedaling, I have a lot of travel, okay? But the travel is good when you're mountain biking down trails. But what's nice about the lockout, if you don't have a lockout, you're always gonna have that bouncy front end feeling. But with a lockout, all you gotta do, lock it out, and now it has a very tiny bit of travel, but it locks out, won't go any further, compared to this. But when you lock it out, so I like the manual lockout, but again, I probably will be upgrading these shocks in the very near future to the Sun Tours, and I'm shooting for more of an air shock with possibly a remote lockout. So we'll have to see how that goes. But so far, I really like this bike and it works great. So there you go, everybody. That right there is just a quick update of what I've done to my Schwinn Axon DP mountain bike so far. This is the most current upgrades I've done to it for 2022. Now, again, I will be probably doing a shock upgrade maybe later on in the spring, but I do wanna hit a few trails on the stock shock just to put it through its paces to see how well it holds up. And then I'll upgrade the shock at a later point. But stay tuned for that video because it will be coming. But that's pretty much it. Again, a lot of these parts I found are very inexpensive. I'll put links in the description of this video. Again, it's very inexpensive products, but the quality is really good, which means you're gonna get the best value, which is what I'm all about, which is high quality products at a lower cost, which is great value for you. Again, none of us wanna waste money. Now I do agree there are some things you do need to pay a little bit more for, for higher quality, but so far a lot of these products I talked about today are pretty high quality. The most expensive upgrade on that bike is the Schwinn MT200 hydraulic brakes. Everything else is very inexpensive. So that's it for today's video. Do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button, like this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And also do me a favor, subscribe to the channel because it definitely helps me out and I greatly appreciate it. So that's it. I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you. I truly appreciate you all. Thank you for all of the support. And as always, see you in the next video.